This picture is not very good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Pratik Roy Chaudhary. I'm one of the product managers within Open Contrail, uh, within Juniper Networks. I lead some of the SDN, NFE, and uh, cloud initiatives within the team. And I'll be co-presenting this session along with Matthew Rohan. Um, yeah, hello everybody. My name is uh, Mathieu Rohan. I'm working at uh, Orange Labs. And I will tell you about the EasyGo network uh, project that we are launching in a trial for now and uh, uh, probably in production soon. So today we are going to talk about simplifying and automating branch networking. And so as Matthew mentioned, in doing so we will look at the journey and approach that uh, one of the tier one service providers is taking. What are the requirements and expectations that they have in delivering this solution and doing it by leveraging some of the uh, existing uh, technologies and services like L3 VPNs. Uh, so we will also look at uh, the Contrail, Open Contrail product, which is a, a cloud network automation uh, initiative within Juniper. And uh, so essentially, we will start off with introducing uh, the two companies, Orange and Open Contrail, and then some of, look at some of the uh, uh, requirements in terms of network services to enable such a solution. We will also look at, from a Contrail perspective, what requirements are we seeing from uh, various diverse customers that we have. We'll also look at the um, solution in a lot more detail, the EasyGo network solution in a lot more detail. And from Open Contrail perspective, we will look at the architecture and features that can enable a solution like that. And then finally, we will conclude with Matthew providing his uh, the perspective of Orange, just summarizing the perspective in Orange of Orange and what are the lessons they have learned in, along the way. Um, so, first of all, uh, Open Contrail itself is completely open source. It is available as Apache V2 license. It is our uh, open source initiative towards cloud network automation, which means that we uh, solve the networking challenges that are there in cloud environments. Um, it is, uh, the product is built using standard uh, protocols, BGP, XMPP, OBSDB, and so on. And that enables, uh, you know, uh, uh, interoperability with different kinds of uh, environments. It enables, uh, you know, multi-vendor and vendor agnostic system integration. Um, it is completely API-driven. Automation is very key for several of our customers. So it is uh, the, every component of Contrail enables APIs, and that enables automation for our customers. And since service providers is a big set of customers that we have, we have made this product truly carrier grade uh, in terms of performance, availability, scalability, and so on. So a uh, very important aspect of the product is the carrier gradeness of the product. Now, I have listed down um, several of our customer segments. We have got the, sing the same product caters to all these wide variety of customers. We have got cloud services and emerging companies on one side. We have got traditional enterprises and we have got uh, you know, service providers, whether cable MSOs and you know, telcos or hosting companies. Now, the single product, as I mentioned, caters to all these different set of customers. On the cloud services uh, side, I've listed down several of our uh, customers. We've got um, SaaS and IT as a service as uh, primary use cases. There are large SaaS companies, security enterprises. Uh, CloudWatt is one of the uh, subsidiaries of Orange. They use Open Contrail. Uh, there's uh, social networking um, uh, software enterprise, large industrial internet enterprise, uh, gaming companies, uh, and so on. So their requirement is basically how can I launch VMs and containers and provide micro segmentation across them, essentially create two virtual networks and uh, provide the micro segmentation across those VMs. Um, IPAM, DN DNS, DHCP are some of the features that they look for and create security policies. Um, they also uh, look at VNF, so network functions, wherever necessary. Um, in terms of enterprises, uh, their use cases, um, bare metal as a service, so mostly focusing on enterprise migration, moving them from a legacy environment to a more uh, you know, cloud-based environment. And one of the examples is Juniper IT uh, that actually uses this uh, technology, uses OpenStack, uses Open Contrail to enable their build servers. And then um, the most relevant for this particular session is uh, the service providers. And their use cases are uh, varied. In the last session, you probably heard more about ESI. 
uh, we have got uh, lots of uh, telcos. We have made several announcements of different telcos all over the world that their use cases are you know, network function um, uh, chaining or service function chaining. Um, they have got the VCP and SD-WAN, some of those use cases. So um, with that, I'll let uh, Matthew just talk a little bit about Orange and introduce. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so I will introduce um, Orange. It's, it's, um, it's a large tel telco company, a uh, French one, and uh, it's a worldwide company providing services uh, to uh, business clients, more than two, 2 million business clients. So we provide uh, IPVPN services, etern Ethernet services, cloud services now also, uh, voices services. And uh, our, our main concern is about uh, high availability, security, and uh, SLAs. So, so before talking about the, the, the service, I want to start by talking about customer expectations, about uh, what do they expect uh, about their network services on top of their IPVPNs. So mainly wh what they want is to be able to manage their, service, their network services on demand. They don't want to have to wait for, um, for several weeks to, to be able to, to run a firewall, for instance, or any, any network uh, services. And they also want to be able to, uh, to uh, manage uh, their uh, network services on their own, being able, for instance, to, to, uh, to uh, add new rules to a firewall and, uh, and have this rule uh, operating uh, as quick as possible. So this is m one of the main reasons why uh, we, uh, we launched the EasyGo network services to be able to provide agilities and, um, and automation to our customers, bec because th this is what they, they ask for today. So from an uh, open contrail perspective, we have, a, as I mentioned, we have a wide variety of customers. And uh, the use cases or uh, the requirements that we see from our customers is that they have different heterogeneous environments. And how can you provide the networking glue that connects these multiple heterogeneous environments? And on top of that, you can provide a vendor agnostic policy abstraction. So these heterogeneous environments could be you know, legacy uh, VLAN, VMware-based environments. Uh, you've got the traditional environment, then you've got your uh, service providers are building distributed data centers, so they are building multiple of these. Every CEOs and POP is becoming a, 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 a mini data center or a micro data center. They also have the centralized data centers. So uh, essentially building out multiple of these distributed data centers which have got virtual machines and containers, bare metal servers and storage. There are uh, physical service appliances, physical firewalls, physical load balancers. There are virtualized instances of those. And then there are public clouds. Some of those public clouds are offered by the service providers themselves, as well as the enterprise branch. And all of these are multiple heterogeneous environments, and they need to be connected to each other. And so what Open Contrail, the, the requirements that we see are legacy interconnect. How do you connect your traditional environment with your uh, next generation uh, modern uh, distributed data center? P plus V interconnect, how do you extend the concept of virtual networking uh, across uh, virtual machines as well as bare metals, um, multi-DC distributed cloud, and service function chaining. Essentially, how do you extend that virtual network across multiple sites and also create service chains which can uh, span across multiple sites? Uh, P plus V service insertion, how do you create service chains which can have virtualized instances as well as physical instances? So VNF plus PNF integration, hybrid cloud, how do you interconnect all these, uh, your modern data center with public cloud environments as well as VCP? How do you connect all these environments? How do you extend this to the customer branch? So these are some of the use cases that we see from our customers. Of course, VCP is one of the use cases and we are going to talk more about the EasyGo network. So, uh, concerning the planning that we had for uh, the EasyGo network service, we had a quite aggressive planning to deliver a live service trial. Uh, it 
took almost one year to uh, to uh, work on the engineering part and the design and uh, to onboard the marketing and the operation operation guide uh, guys excuse me and uh, the the trial opening in, in uh, May uh, 2015. So now let me talk about the design of the solution of the Easy Go Network service. So here is how uh, an IPVPN service look, looks like. You have several customer sites uh, with uh, customer equipment uh, connected to an IPVPN and uh, customer sites are, are able to talk to each other through the IPVPN and they are also able to, to talk to internet through this IPVPN. So the first thing, uh, think, uh, the first thing that we need uh, for the service is the virtualization of the network uh, services. Uh, we didn't want to have to deal with uh, with uh, with appliances uh, sometime uh, in the customer site. Uh, we we have to rely on network services to to provide the the on-demand experience for the customer. So we also wanted to be able to change those services. And we choose to have some uh, service chain per access. So when a customer, ac when a, when a customer wants to, to access his IPVPN, he will go through a service chain before uh, accessing uh, another customer site, for example. So the customer will be able to manage uh, each uh, of its access service chain, but it will be able to, to manage a global IPVPN service chain too, uh, with several, several ne network uh, services in it that will be used to uh, access the, the, the internet through the, its IPVPN. So what were the building blocks that we were needed for this uh, for these services? Most of them are components that you you are al already aware of because you are at the summit. So, so we need a, a self care portal of course for the for the customer so that he can manage its uh, network services and the chaining of its network services. We rely on um, plug and pay, play uh, customer, customer equipment uh, with no value added in it. Uh, most of the value are provided by network services inside the backbone. So we needed uh, service, uh, network services, some firewall, VNFs, uh, antivirus, uh, um, uh, all kind of network services that are available as VNF and as uh, as a virtual component, running on top of uh, commodity uh, hardware, mainly x, x, x uh, eighty six uh, servers. So we need to manage those uh, those uh, resources uh, by a virtual infrastructure manager. We also need the uh, VNF manager and configura configurator to, to configure the network services, the virtual appliances. We also need a SDN controller to manage the, the steering of the traffic and the chain between the, the, the different uh, VNFs, the different virtual appliances. And uh, finally, we need an orchestrator so that we can um, synchronize the provisioning uh, between uh, the OSS, the BSS, and the infrastructure. So is, here it goes in real. We, we developed a, a, a self-care portal for the customer. And here are the components that map to the to the concept that I uh, spoke to, uh, in the previous slide. So we mostly use uh, open source component. Uh, of course, we use uh, OpenStack as a virtual infrastructure manager. We are using OpenContrail as a SDN controller. 
we have um, some uh, virtual uh, appliances, virtual services uh, running on top of Debian for firewalling, for example. Uh, we are also using some uh, Versa virtual uh, uh, virtual appliances for deep packet, uh, deep packet inspection, for instance. And we are also using uh, some virtual SRX uh, from Juniper uh, to provide a virtual firewall at the, uh, in, the fr in front of the, the internet access. So when a packet uh, comes from uh, a customer site, it will, in this topology, it will go through the Debian firewall first and then go uh, through the deep packet in inspection service before going to another customer site. And if it has to go to uh, the internet, it will go through the Juniper SRX uh, uh, before, before leaving the, the IP VPN. So if we focus on the SDN controller part, uh, the main requirement that we had uh, uh, and that we needed from a SDN controller perspective were the ability to change uh, the services through APIs. This was provided uh, by, uh, by OpenContrail. And also the ability to easily integrate those service chain in into uh, our uh, BGP uh, IP VPN. This was also provided by OpenContrail. So I leave the floor to Okay. So now, now that you heard about uh, uh, about the story, I'll talk a little bit about the Contrail architecture that can enable a solution like this. So in terms of the architecture, it's it's very simplified. There is a we have created a Neutron plugin, and that's how we integrate with OpenStack. So OpenStack uh, it, it enables the Neutron V2 APIs. It also has a bunch of other APIs that lets it uh, do things which are not available in Neutron today. Uh, for example, service chaining. Uh, and essentially, uh, it, it, that lets the OpenStack component talk to the uh, Open uh, o Contrail controller, which is a, a s logically centralized but physically distributed uh, controller system, and it talks BGP east-west, and that's how it can scale. Um, so it lets uh, operators define policies. So this is the policy definition layer, policies such as create two virtual networks, and you can have as part of the virtual networks VMs, uh, bare metal servers, and create in such a fashion that any traffic that goes from the virtual network blue to a virtual network red has to go through a firewall, which is also a virtual machine. So that kind of a logical policy can be defined, and the policy enforcement happens at the data plane. So there is a lightweight kernel loadable module called vRouter, which sits in every x86 host. It could also sit in a CP, for example, in, if the CP happens to be uh, x86 or uh, ARM-based. Uh, essentially, what it lets you do is uh, create overlay virtual networks through the use of overlay tunnels. And these tunnels, all of these tunnels terminate at something which we call as a gateway. And that lets you essentially go to either internet or an L3 VPN, for example. Uh, also, the tunnels go and uh, terminate on a top of rack switch to which where um, Contrail con controller talks over ESDB and creates bridge domains. That's how you can have bare metal servers as part of the same virtual network. So extending the concept of virtual networking from not just VMs and containers, but also to bare metal servers. So uh, in terms, that is the, that is the architecture. Uh, one of the important things to note here is that uh, you know, uh, since the Contrail controller uh, and since the Contrail, open Contrail component talks standard protocols, it lets uh, users have a vendor agnostic system integration. So for example, whether you're talking about uh, you know, different flavors of x86 servers or different flavors of Linux operating systems or hypervisors, whether you're talking about different kinds of gateways, which talk BGP, uh, whether you're talking about top of rack switches, which, talk, which can talk OVSDB, or whether you're talking about different kinds of orchestrators. Uh, for example, we expose every component through API, so it's not just OpenStack, but there are other orchestrators get, that can talk to the Contrail controller, or whether you're talking about the network functions themselves. 
So it actually provides you a vendor agnostic or multi-vendor kind of a system integration. So a bunch of loosely coupled components coming together and providing an entire uh, cloud orchestration system. Now, one of the reasons why service providers uh, actually like us is that if you look at something that they have been offering to their end customers for a long time, which is IP and MPLS VPNs, the architecture there is very similar to the architecture that we offer in Contrail. And, what we, uh, and we provide a single unified uh, control plane. And so we, what we have done is, with that single unified control plane uh, using BGP, we have extended the L3 VPN constructs all the way to the hosts in a data center. It could also be extended to a CPE environment uh, if the CPE environment uh, so it chooses to. So this is this is uh, one of the things why uh, you know service providers actually uh, like this uh, environment. Um, now, in terms of the Contrail product features, we have got a, a rich set of uh, features. We have got routing and switching features, which are not only IPv4 but uh, IPv6 enabled. We have got a bunch of uh, you know IPAM, DNS, DHCP, source NAT, uh, floating IP, which provides one is to one uh, NATing quality of service. So all those features are provided within the V router. We provide load balancing, ECMP-based load, ba load balancing that enables you to scale VNFs uh, horizontally. And one of the important things about all these features is that all of this is provided in a very distributed fashion. Because the V router itself is distributed, all of this is provided in a very distributed fashion. There are security policy enfor enforcement through the use of distributed firewall. So we have stateful firewall capabilities within the V router itself. As I mentioned, uh, we can run third-party network services there. You saw an example of several third-party network services that we're running in the case of EasyGo Network. Um, uh, you know, there are gateway services, L2, L3 services, analytics, one of the strong points of Contrail, which enables you to monitor and troubleshoot the environment. One of the other aspects about uh, uh, overlay, underlay correlation, that is uh, another aspect of uh, analytics, which enables you to map overlay flows to actual underlay uh, paths. So you can essentially see what overlay flows are taking what underlay paths. Very important for troubleshooting and uh, tr troubleshooting especially. Service chaining, whether we are talking about um, level, uh, layer two or layer three s services, or whether we are talking about virtual or physical services, service chaining, or we are talking about even IPv6 services. So all of those service chaining is, is provided. High availability, as I mentioned, it is, carry, it is carrier grade, so we have provided high level of availability and every component of Contrail offers API services that lets you do the automation, the cloud network automation that we talked about. So I did mention that uh, Contrail is open sourced. Now, how open is uh, Contrail really? We've got a single source code repository, which is in GitHub. You can actually go to GitHub and search for open Contrail, and you can get the entire source code. So we are completely open sourced, as you can see. We do not have a fork, so essentially a single GitHub source code repository from which we uh, derive some of the community releases, as well as Juniper-supported releases. That's where we monetize. Uh, that's where Juniper monetizes. And then you have got a, a launch pad um, bug database, which is an open bug database where you can go and view all the all the bugs submitted either by customers or uh, developers. Uh, and then you've got, of course, the community developing a lot of code. And there is also an open control advisory board that oversees all of this. And that advisory board consists of you know, veterans in the industry and users of Open Contrail. Again, there is a lot more information about this on opencontrail.org, so please feel free to take a look at uh, at that website. Yeah, thank you. So to conclude, I would like to to talk about uh, Orange's perspective and um, mainly about um, why uh, the open source component uh, are so important for us in uh, in this project. Uh, we needed them to to be able to to actually um, move faster and being uh, able to to uh, fix bugs when we uh, we found some, uh, be able to deep dive in the code, and that allow us to to uh, to develop some specific feature on top of uh, Open Contrail or any other open other open source component, like uh, like OpenStack. We are very active in OpenStack too, and uh, it's really a key feature to not to not to have to wait for the 
the good willing of the of the vendor to 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 have a bug fix or to have a specific feature. We want also to move forward uh, to move toward toward standardization of API. As I already already said, we are the key component for us are service chaining for this service and um, BGP, uh, BGP, BGP VPN interconnection. So there are there is a the networking uh, service function chaining uh, uh, project in Neutron that uh, that is leading the uh, the API wor API work around the service chaining in Neutron, and we are leading also uh, uh, the BGP VPN uh, project in Neutron that uh, aims at uh, providing a standardized API to attach Neutron networks to BGP VPNs. So to conclude, this, this project was uh, kind of disruptive for, for Orange, for Operation Guide, because <laughs> we switched from a, a router world where we manage a router by CLI or by uh, some, uh, some uh, networking uh, configuration uh, protocols to uh, APIs, to, uh, to server, to uh, a world more managed by IT. And we are moving, of course, from a uh, from, uh, ticket uh, to, to the vendor to a launchpad uh, world where, where anyone can uh, feel, feel a bug and, uh, and work on, on bug issues and propose some new patches. And that was uh, one of the most interesting work inside this project. Thank you. So that, that's all we had. Uh, again, there's a lot more information from the Open Contrail site on opencontrail.org website, and I'll encourage you to go take a look at it. Um, um, if there are any you know, outstanding questions, please feel free. Yes. Uh, I have a question for Patrick and Matthew, uh, each other. For uh, Patrick, uh, do you think uh, the compatibility with the ODR is important? for the open country is for you. And then the, what I would expect from uh, deploying this kind of uh, uh, like uh, CP solutions in the cloud, should it be a uh, OPEX, uh, KPI is OPEX deduction or with, uh, some revenue increase? What would it be it? So I, I, I can take your first question. So uh, first of all, we are a silver member of ODL. So it's a very, we look at it as a very complementary approach. In fact, there are customers where you know, ODL takes care of you know, multi-vendor device management, device configuration management, whereas we take care of the SDN environment. So we see ourselves as very, very complementary in that case. But uh, you do not provide the uh, ODL compatible northbound APIs. O ODL compatible well, northbound APIs. Yeah, we have, API. Yes. So in in an earlier release, we had a southbound plugin to Open Contrail. Uh -huh. So but if northbound. Northbound from where? Uh, the user program, uh, your SDK for based on the ODR or something. So uh, see, here's the thing, right? Yeah. Contrail has got uh, REST APIs. Every component in Contrail has APIs enabled, right? Mm -hmm. So any kind of uh, layer can actually talk to this from a northbound perspective. And we have we've done lots of integrations with different kinds of orchestration, uh, orchestration systems. And so okay. on this yeah. question, I would say that the, the, the standard API to manage both ODL and, uh, and Open Contrail yeah, okay. might be Newton. Okay, all right. That's the way we, we see the, the thing. And that's why we are yeah. working on BGP VPN to standardize this kind of uh, uh -huh. API and this kind of use okay. cases that can be provided both by uh, Open okay. Control and by ODL on, okay. on or other SDN controllers. Yeah. So which means that the telcos does not mind the, uh, which vendor's API it is, uh, as far as it works. Uh, yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. <laughs> and then what is your KPI? Concerning the KPI and the cost reduction, of course it's um, something that we want to address through this project, but as I uh, introduced, I think the most value uh, in this project is uh, the capability for the customers to really uh, have a self-care portal to manage its services dynamically and on demand. That's it. That is uh, the, the, the main, uh, uh, the main uh, issue that the we want to address through so this project. Enhance the functionality for the customers. Enhance and uh, give agility to our customers. Okay. Yeah.
Any other any other questions? All right, if there are no other questions, thank you so much for your time. Um, thank you.